Now this wasn't going to be a YouTube video, but this is under the bonnet of that ED Falcon. And it actually needs a good run because it's um, needing to be charged. You can see by this, that means it's good and doesn't need anything doing. And the middle clear one says charge. If I go around to this window, you can see that it's the clear one. So, hmm. Anyway, it's, it was a little bit low on oil. It was down to the top of the ad mark. But the bigger problem is the oil should have been changed already. I do believe the previous owner said it was due for a service, which is fine. That's nothing, you know, nothing wrong with that. Um, so anyway, what I've done is, because the oil's low, I put a litre of just cheap no-name oil in this thing with the idea of... What I like to do, if you're going to service a car that's... This stupid camera strap. If you're going to service a car that's low on oil and it's, it's really dirty or, or whatever, especially if it's really dirty, what you should do is actually add some new clean oil, even if it's the cheapest oil of the correct grade. Um, so what you do is you add oil to bring it up to the where it should be, the full mark, and then warm the engine up, even if you drive it. Even if you take it for a drive, this one we can't because it isn't registered. And yeah, we don't want a $700 fine for that which is what the fine in Victoria is for driving an unregistered car or breach of unregistered vehicle permit conditions, just to point that out. Anyway, warm it up, maybe not to operating temperature, so if it's cold, just comfortably warm to stir up all of the junk in the sump, get everything moving, and basically, then you change the oil, drop it out, yeah, it'll take some of the sludge and crap with it, if there's any. And, um, yeah, so I'm going to do that now. Just to show you how dirty the oil actually is. There you can see it's well overdue for a service. It's, um, it's just black. So, and oil, it's really dirty. I mean, it's not caused a problem. You can see the dipstick comes up nice and clean, but, you know, you can just see that it's filthy it's like really really bad but anyway partly the problem is the manufacturer's recommendations is 10,000 K services which in my opinion is far too long but there wasn't much oil in it either because I've added half a litre to a litre to it and it's sort of just brought it up to the ad mark so oil pressure was good though we checked that and all that so I didn't know it was that low on oil but no harm done um, it's partly why the oil is so dirty, because when you have not much oil, anything that gets past the rings, which every engine has that problem, it's not unique to this engine or whatever, a brand new car has combustion gases and byproducts that get past the piston rings into the sump. It's just a fact, you can't get away from it. And that's partly why engine oil changes are a lot more frequent than, say, a diff or a gearbox because engine oil gets contaminated. That's why oil ain't oils. Mm. You know, thanks Castrol, I think, is the company that said that. Engine oil contains a complex um, package of, of chemicals and additives that are designed to keep the carbon particles and stuff in suspension, not just settling on the bottom of the sump like it used to happen in the 70s and 60s and all that detergents to clean the carbon varnish gum deposits from the inside of the engine, anti-foaming agents to stop the oil from foaming up and therefore you would lose lubrication and oil pressure because air compresses and that's bad for lubrication systems because it's a pressurised lubrication system and the workshop manual will tell you what the pressure is supposed to be between and if you've got a car that's got a fancy instrument cluster like this Ford does, it has an oil pressure gauge, which is mainly symbolic. It will tell you if there's a big problem, but yeah, the gauge is probably about as useful as the light is in this case, because it doesn't really tell you what the unit of measure is or anything like that. So it's not a diagnostic oil pressure gauge, is what I'm getting at. So any car you've got with an oil pressure gauge, just regard it with a grain of salt, unless it's a really fancy aftermarket gauge that's calibrated in PSI or KPA or whatever your chosen unit of measure is. Um, yeah, this is just tips. I'm not doing an oil change how-to video, so don't you know think that I'm doing another boring video about changing oil, but it's just about 
tips and stuff like that. Okay, so I'm going to start it up. And, uh, yeah. I'm going to put this camera... I'm going to put this camera down and fire the car up. You can see the engine's nice and quiet. Um, if you give a shit about your car, 7,000 k's is probably the longest you should ever leave engine oil in it. That's just my opinion, but I think that 10,000 k's is a long time for oil to be in a car. And modern cars that have 15,000 k's service intervals, not all of them have done that well with that interval. Um, good quality oil's a must. Um, if you change your oil regularly, the, the more frequently you change your engine oil, the cleaner the inside of the engine will stay. It's a fact. Any, anything that's, you know, past uh, a dark amber colour and it's getting black or brown, it, it does, all the carbon and stuff sticks to the inside of the engine and the, the packages wear, wear out, the, the chemical additive packages wear out and they stop cleaning the, the deposits away as well, as well as they once did. So I suggest, really, seriously, um, change your oil at 7,000 k's. It's not going to hurt. Um, you know, it's 3,000 k's sooner. That's quite reasonable. So, yeah, this is just stuff to remember before you change your oil in your car. Also remember that old oil tends to get thicker as, it, as it's cold, right? That's what the 20W is. W for winter or the cold, you know, viscosity index. Um, as the engine oil wears out, the multi-viscosity properties of the oil, that is, it gets um, thicker as it gets warm and thinner when it's cold, stop doing their job properly. That's why the oil and the dipstick is really quite thick, because it stops doing its job, okay? And that's important for you to know because the oil pressure is going to be shit for the first, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes of it running in the driveway because, you know, the chemicals aren't doing their job. And that's why, partly why we need to change oil. It isn't just because oil gets dirty. It's because all the additive packages in the oil stop doing their job and their job is absolutely vital. Oil is not just a clean version of what comes out of the ground. It's a lot more than that. There are numbers of different additives, which Wikipedia has a very good page on it. Haven't seen it recently, but um, honestly, if you're into cars, you should know this stuff. You should be reading about it and be interested in it, because this is the exact reason why we do things the way we do. This stuff dictates when things happen and why, okay? And if you don't understand it, then you basically don't understand much of anything. This is part of what every motor mechanic learns at trade school. You know, lubricants and lubrication is, is, a, is a subject all on its own. It's very interesting, it's well worthwhile knowing, and the more you know, the more you'll appreciate why manufacturers um, set out the guidelines they set out. You know, they're not just a guess, they're, it's based on knowledge. That's why it says in the book, 10,000 k's or six months, whichever comes first, or, for example, under severe operating conditions, sooner. Sooner it depends on what kind of severe operating conditions. You might need to change your oil at 5,000 k's in some four-wheel drive type vehicles that are run really hard off-road. And coolant's the same. In severe conditions, it should be changed more often. And I think coolant's left in far too long anyway, partly because the good old that thing and uh, that thing, which are never ever changed, um, coolant can last five years or, you know, hundreds of thousands of k's, like I think 250,000 some coolant will last. And that's a very bad idea because these things stop working, they don't hold pressure anymore. These things stop working, they stick open or closed, and then the engine gets really hot, the coolant ends up on the ground, and basically end up with a ruined engine. Every car I service that's, you know, every car I service, even, that, even newer cars that are like within 10 years of age, I put a new radiator cap and thermostat on them anyway. Same with the PCV valve. This is the sort of thing to check. They block up and they're there to do a job. If this valve blocks up with crap, 
it is not going to clean the byproducts, combustion byproducts, out of the crankcase. That's absolutely vital that this system works properly. The PCV system is probably one of the most important features on your engine just to keep it clean. The, the less well this works, the more crap's going to build up. And really, you can check it by sometimes this rubber will go really hard. This one's a little bit firm, but I'm going to scrape with inox later on and it'll just slip out. But you pull a valve out. Um, if this has gone really hard, you're going to have to take the rocker cover off and chisel this, carefully chisel this seal, because they'll go rock hard if the car's done miles. Um, but you ch just take the valve out and you can basically, you know, you can hear it sucking. Uh, you can also just pull the hose off and um, you can pull the hose off and check to see if it's doing much that way. Idle increase. And actually you can hear the valve operating, maybe not on the camera. That's also a sign that this engine doesn't really have any gasket problems or seal problems because the idle is increasing when I pull that hose off. Um, because air is now bypassing the throttle plate. The ECU responds by injecting more fuel because um, it's got that manifold pressure sensor or manifold absolute pressure sensor. Um, that goes down to the inlet manifold obviously. And if you have a, a buggered rocker cover gasket that just pisses oil out, your, your idle should be slightly higher than normal because it's leaking vacuum. And also seals and gaskets are important too because if seals and gaskets leak oil, they're leaking vacuum. And if you drive it up a dirt road, for example, whatever's around the engine is going to end up in the engine. Because that's sucking air through the whole time. It's creating a negative pressure inside the crankcase, slightly. So that's something to keep in mind. It's not just about oil changes. It's also about seals and gaskets. Oil leaks should be fixed. You know, if you leak oil, you're basically sucking dirt into the engine. Um, and whatever else happens to be around at the time. That's something to keep in mind with an older car if you're going to pressure clean it because that's often a bad idea. Pressure cleaning engines to make them look pretty that you know leak oil. Basically, unless you're going to repair the leaks, pressure cleaning it's not a good idea because you're going to get water in that engine. Pretty much. So if you can't drive it for, you know, 10Ks, you know, or whatever, um, a 10K drive, you shouldn't really even pressure clean it because you need to be able to get that engine hot to dry it out the water that might have gotten into it. But, you know, the pressure cleaner is well capable of forcing water past a dodgy rocker cover gasket. So to keep, just keep that in mind when you're working on your car. It is a good idea to keep an eye on the slightly symbolic oil pressure gauge. It's sort of where it should be. And yeah, it does go up when you rev it, which is what should happen. Um, the engine's very quiet and the lifters bleed up straight away, so there's no pressure problems. So I reckon that's probably not bad. I'm going to shut it down and I'm going to actually drop the oil out. I think this probably concludes the video. I'm not going to bother showing any of the oil changing process because you guys have seen that plenty of times on my channel. But this is just, just anything I thought of. You know, tips, information, whatever. Well, this is the filthiest oil I've ever seen in my life. And as you can see, there isn't much oil in there. Mm. There's like about two and a half litres when you put this container on a level surface. You know, that's just, yeah, that's after I added like half a litre, maybe three quarters of a litre to it. You can see it's filthy and very, very thick. Like it's, it's filters being not like this for a while and there's quite a decent coating. Normally I'd expect, it's not cold oil, it's you know, comfortably warm I guess, maybe 30 degrees, and it's just taking forever to drain down. The shocking thing about this was, not just the sump plug that had the crap tightened out of it, but the filter. My god it was tight. Um, you probably can't appreciate that in the video because it's all black, but I could damage the filter getting it undone. You can see the marks where the tools just squished it, like, yeah you can sort of just see on profile, it's not quite round anymore, but I had to tighten, I mean this was so tight, you know someone's tightened the crap out of that, you can see with this tool, this is my oil filter removal tool, this came from Super Cheap Auto and it's quite a good tool, 
like a planetary gear type tool. Um, the, the band ones are completely useless on most cars these days because there's not enough room to use one. In the Commodore you can, but a Falcon you can't because you pretty much only have access to the filter. The filter sits down on an angle, you know, a bit like that, and you can only really get to, you know, this much of the filter, and it doesn't stick out, it's recessed into the K-frame. But someone just tightened the absolute shit out of it. Um, I don't know why, because this is for removing filters, right? Not for putting them on. Um, doesn't tell you on the box, but yes it does. No, it doesn't. Doesn't matter, but anyway. The filter that I put on, and if it's not on the box, it was stamped on the actual... If, you ha if you're looking down into the filter, it had three slash four, as in three quarters. So it's three quarters of a turn after, when you spin it on, the gasket contacts the um, oil filter housing. And um, I don't know why people tighten the shit out of these things, but you don't have to. They're not going to seal better if you tighten the crap out of them. I mean, if I service a car, I can generally get a clean, not oily filter off just with both hands. But, you know, without straining myself. But this, I, I just can't get over how tight it was. You know, I should have filmed it, but you can just see these massive marks on it from me. Like, you can see here's what it should look like. Uh, but then you've got these really deep marks in there from me having to undo it. I just can't get over how tight that was. But anyway, thanks for watching. There's enough oil in it, and this is my funnel. It just sort of sits in there. Anyway, thanks for watching. Well, this just shows how filthy the um, oil in that ED Falcon really was. This is like... Uh, four hours later, you can see the only clean bits where are where the um, you know where, where the mould has left marks on the on the plastic, but that's just really thick and doubt that any oil is going to come out of that. No drips on the end of it, so this is part of the reason why a really bad overdue oil change makes your engine so dirty because instead of it slipping back to the sump like it's meant to. It's just sitting there like there's a it doesn't look that bad until you realize that this line here is actually quite thick i'm not going to put my hand in it maybe i'll put this lid in it but you you won't appreciate how thick this is but let's try not to get all oily if i go here you might be able to just sort of tell that that's about a millimeter or half a millimeter thick well, when I serviced my uh, VS Commodore, which was 5,000 over this service interval, or maybe 2,000, I'm not really sure, to be honest, I wasn't keeping track, um, I left it up to drain like this for, I don't know, an hour, and it came out clean, like there was just a little bit left. Well, this is just extreme. That's really going to screw with your oil pressure too, because it's not going to flow the way it should. So, yeah, change your oil when you're supposed to. Like, that's just, yeah, wow.